Um, Harvard did not like this, okay? They got mad. <laughs> and they got even more mad when they found out that these guys were talking to the press, specifically the New York Times. And they came out with this policy that says students can't talk to the media without going through the Office of Public Affairs, which is kind of, kind of iffy, right guys? So, then, the New York Times picked up on the story. And this was the most emailed article for a week, and not just in like the health policy boring education section of the New York Times, but in the whole damn thing. And they were quoted. The students argue that Harvard should be embarrassed by the F grade it received on AMSA's scorecard. So you guys may know, we rate all the schools on their policies and give them report card-like grades. And Kirsten was even quoted in the New York Times, this is her obviously, uh, saying that Harvard needs to live up to its name and that it should be ashamed. And so interestingly, after all this press, Harvard backed off immediately. They got rid of their policy about students talking to the media, and they apologized to these students that they had actually scared with this policy and the threat of academic discipline. They also, uh, okay, so this is the further part about that, just referencing that it was that story that did it. They also, on our scorecard, changed, oh, see this is supposed to disappear now, but you can see they ended up with a B. So they went from an F to a B. They came up with a stronger policy, and students and patients are much better off as a result of this because of what Kirsten and a couple other friends did. And you can see there from an F2. Um, so that's Kirsten. So she said to me today, AMSA opened me up to a lot of ways that students can advocate for change that benefits patients. Meeting people like Flavio, and this is Flavio here, who's a very influential mentorship kind of guy. I saw that even as a college student, I have a lot of power. So that should speak to you guys, and that's my message, guys, to you. You guys have a lot of power if you want it, and you don't have to be a whiz kid like Doogie Hauser. You guys would get this if you saw the opening video from Hulu. You guys don't have to be geniuses to make this stuff happen, because you guys all have the ability to be great leaders. Who here has organized a party? Right? Who here has gotten people to put in on a gift? Who here has written a strongly worded letter to an academic board or an airline or a toll booth commission? <laughs> so you guys are busy. <laughs> you already know how to complain when something is not right and how to get people together. And I, before I did anything in AMSA, I organized a bus to take people to the bar for one of our parties. <laughs> I did a great around the world party. So you guys all have those skills. You just need to apply them in the right way. And if you don't want to apply them in an AMSA kind of way, that's all right but it can really benefit you. So you guys know we have conferences, that's Paul Farmer. We have leadership institutes where you guys can become experts on issues. We have tons of leadership positions for, med, for pre meds. These are all of our pre-med leaders, not even the medical students. Um, we have lobbying, we have internships. So there's Kirsten with Joe Biden when she was an intern. These two just left the internship, that's Congressman Conyers. This is uh, one of the girls from the previous picture being on C-SPAN. This is uh, the announcement about the new health care bill from the Senate, and that's me. One of the interns is hiding behind this guy, Tom Harkin. That's an intern there, and that's another intern there. So like, these are good internships, and they, they bring you right into the center of the action. We also have fellowships, like what I'm doing, and there's tons of networking. And I don't think this slide is going to work, but what was supposed to happen here, okay, good. So these yellow arrows point to pre-meds here, all right? So if you're a pre-med, you want to meet medical students from the schools that you go to and who share your interests. So those are pre-meds. All the people with blue arrows are now residents. So I might want to talk to them or you guys might want to. Pink arrows, those are the MPHs, so you could talk to them. And this guy has an MBA and he's a resident at MGH, Mass General Hospital, or man's greatest hospital. So <laughs> tons of connections all in this room. And this is just a breakfast for the leadership. So you guys have this kind of networking at your fingertips if you want it. So I was going to show another clip here where Doogie is questioning if this woman needs a lot of cosmetic surgery and all the doctors say that she does, but they're wrong. And that's the point. Speaking up when you see something is wrong and trying to make change happen. So what makes a great doctor? I know at least one answer. And it's all of the leaders and the people who get involved with AMSA. And whatever you want to be, it's supposed to go a little faster too. You guys are the future of medicine. So think about what kind of great doctor you want to be. And I just wanted to point out that one thing you guys should know about is the regional conference coming up in October. There's a ton of great stuff going on, and it's not very expensive for three, two or three days. Three days? Three days. 
and the theme is sources of wellness, but they've got a lot of different speakers. One of their keynotes used to be editor of the New England Journal of Medicine. Um, so what comes next for you guys? So who is not a member of AMSA, but is now more thinking about joining AMSA? All right, that's pretty good, right? Uh, so think about joining. Also think about attending the regional conference. Visit our website to find out what we can do for you guys. Maybe go to a leadership institute. Come to our national convention, it's in Disneyland. And when you get there, run for office and do all kinds of other fun things. We have a lot of parties too. So that's it. I'm sorry I ran a little bit over. Oh, no, I didn't. And uh, I'd love to take whatever questions you guys have. I'll be sticking around for a little while. And if Mason, you want to talk about how to get into med school, we can totally do that too. Um, are there any questions? Two minutes of questions would be a good number of questions. There usually aren't that many. So I'll give you guys a tip, a networking tip. Whenever there's a speaker who has something that you want, and I, maybe I don't, but uh, when there's a speaker, a congressman, or the head of a company, or a big doctor from a hospital you want to go to, when they start talking, think about the good, awesome question that you're going to ask them, okay? And then be the first person to get your hand up and ask that question, and give it a decent length preface. So I did this a couple months ago to Barack Obama's top advisor, and he goes, great question, where do you go to med school? And I was like, oh, UConn, thanks for asking. And he ended up coming to AMSA for one of our conventions as a keynote, so I got a big ask out of that guy, you know? And I talked to him all about advising the president. So that's a tip, asking questions is a good way to show that you're smart. <laughs> oh, look at that. Future surgeon. Is this, is this group focused more on legislation or also like on hands, like interactive patients or shadowing? Do they pick up with things like that? So we can, um, but we mainly operate on a national level. I mean, your, your local shadowing experience would be different from that of someone at UConn, right? And generally, the best way to do shadowing is to contact the medical school dean or a director of a department and say, hey, I'm in college and I'd like to shadow, and that's very easy to set up. Um, we don't just do legislative work. We've done a lot of that because there's a ton going on on Capitol Hill right now, right? But one of the things that we're breaking out now, and a couple of folks have the pins on, which I love. They're doing it to please me, I think. But we're trying to make you guys know about how to make healthcare safer and more effective. So I talked about those wrong site surgeries. You guys will go off to med schools, and some of you will be in places just like Ben was. And if you know what he knows, you can help those patients a lot. A lot more than you would if you operated on all of them, you know? Like, you can save, I think it's half a million people from dying if you got that checklist in every hospital in America, okay? Now, you'll never see half a million patients in your whole life. So that tells you the magnitude or the enormity of what you can do with simple changes like that in education. We're also trying to teach people how to learn skills faster because there's a lot of evidence and a lot of literature that they don't tell you in med school about how we learn and how to learn surgical skills or diagnosis much faster. Which is cool, right guys? And it's good for patients, it's good for you guys. Other questions? Um, we've had a lot of discussion here about how we have an advantage over many AMSA chapters because we're so close to DC. Mm -hmm. um, if there is maybe one way that you would suggest taking advantage of that, or is there something that we should do differently because we are so close to proximity? Well, so you guys, you know that there's a ton happening on Capitol Hill right now, and frankly, a lot of it is scary or frustrating or whatever. Um, but whatever you believe, based on your experiences, and you guys are not naive to healthcare, you know, you know what's going on to some degree, and you've probably done some shadowing or some volunteering, it's great to just go talk to your congressman. Now your senator, if you're from Maryland, is Barbara Mikulski, who is uh, sort of stature de de uh, <laughs> deprived in the front row in that picture there. You can go talk to her or one of her staffers for five minutes and say, you know, this is what I care about, what are you doing? to make that happen. It doesn't have to be healthcare reform and the public option. You can talk about debt, you can talk about primary care, whatever. Um, but there's so much going on in Washington. When you get that experience, it helps you understand what happens there. And then you can tell patients who ask you, family members and other doctors, that you guys can have a voice in Congress. So that's really important. I'd say call or visit your congressman at least once next semester. <coughs> Calling is pretty easy. And we're going to. Excellent. <laughs> when I was a first year, I made a goal to call my congressman every month, and I failed after the third month. 
It was an admirable call. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think you should.